Hello legends. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do client side tool calling with 11 labs. And um, I'm gonna show you how to do transfer to a human agent. So two months ago, I actually wrote the JavaScript code for uh, 11 labs in Twilio. So you can do inbound calls, outbound calls, and send custom values into calls. So you can have like dynamic conversations and like greet the customer by name. And in this time, I've had heaps of people reach out to me to build this system out for them. So if you are a business owner and you want this built out for your team, yeah, please reach out. My details will be in the description of this video. Um, but yeah, the most requested feature was uh, transfer to a human agent. So in order for this to be ready for like production to use some kind of AI caller, uh, typically you want some like escalation route. So the customer calls up your AI caller. There's an issue that the AI caller cannot help with. So they want to escalate to a human support. And this, that, like this tool call actually does that for you. So if I just zoom out and I go into tool call and click custom tool, um, there's two different types of tool calling that we can do. The first is a webhook tool call, which is where we define the actual API call within the 11 labs interface. And the second type of tool call, which is the client side tool calling is when you're running your AI caller on something like JavaScript or Python. So you define the actual API call and everything like that in JavaScript, but you just put the high level configuration in your 11 labs agent. So in this video, we're focusing on client side tool calling. I'm going to show you how to basically run the transfer to an agent tool call in JavaScript, which you can then take, you can put that code into chat GPT and say, Hey, you know, use this same methodology. And now I want to do, um, you know, plug it into a pinecone database to have super, super accurate FAQs. Um, but before, yeah, before we go on, make sure you watch this video because it's going to, I'm basically progressing from this checkpoint. So watch this video, download the code, install it onto your replet. Um, and I'm going to give you another script that you can install, basically plug and play into this code. So you can have this live agent handoff. Um, now just to show you, this is the replet script. This is part of the replet script. This is one of the pieces of code that we basically like that defines this uh, tool call. Um, but this is just visually to show you that this is a, uh, this is all hard coded. So this is JavaScript and this is how we're doing the live agent handover. Now to demonstrate this, I've just opened up um, Twilio dev phone, which is giving, oh, sorry, which is giving me the ability to call my AI agent, my 11 labs AI agent through the web. Uh, Cause I only have one phone. So you're basically going to see me call through this dev interface. And then I'm going to immediately ask my um, 11 labs agent to transfer me to a human. And then my mobile phone is going to get the phone call and because I've got microphones and two calls at once, I'm gonna get a lot of like signal interruption. So I cannot actually show you both ends of the phone call, but um, when you download and install this for yourself, you'd be able to yeah, test it out in real life. So uh, let me just call right now. Hi, I'm Eric. How can I help you today? Hey, Eric, uh, I wanna speak with a human. Okay. Please hold while we connect you to an agent. So we actually have some cool hold music as well, by the way, which is cool, that's on Twilio's end. And then when I pick up the phone call, it's gonna get a little bit loud. Hello. Hello. Uh, you get a bit uh, of feedback, feedback here and there. And there. Okay, that wasn't actually so bad for uh, the feedback, um, but that was pretty neat. We had some hold music for the person that was calling. So initially speaking to the AI agent, uh, that person had some hold music. And then the human that was called, you didn't, you didn't hear it, but there was a message that was played to me when I first picked up the phone. That's why it took like five seconds or whatever for after I picked up the phone to actually tap in so the human to human convo would go. Um, so I'm gonna explain each of those components one by one. But before I get into that, um, I want to go over high level tool calling 101. So there are three main components to doing tool calling with LLMs. The first is you have to define the tool. So the name of the tool, the description of the tool, the parameters, like what variables are going to be used in that tool. Um, you need a way to identify when a tool is called during a conversation. And then number three, uh, and this is part of like this one. So you're actually defining the API call itself. But then after you identify, oh, the tool is being called, then you actually call that tool. So you execute the API call and then you check the calendar for something or you transfer to an agent in our case, or even ending the phone call is a tool call as well. So that's 101 for tool calling. Now I've got a code here, which is uh, OpenAI Real-Time API. 
And um, these guys do tool calling a little bit differently to 11 labs, but I just want to show you at a high level what's going on. So over here, we have the uh, array of tool calling objects. And this is essentially like, you've defined that it's a function, so it's a tool call. Uh, the name, the description, what parameters, like what variables are being used inside that tool call. So if I go to add tool, that's like this stuff here, name, description, um, what parameters we're actually using. So body parameters here. And if I scroll a little bit down, so that, that was this first bit, so defining the actual tool call. Um, we need a way to identify when the tool is being called and then the actual API call, we need to define that as well. We basically need to make an API call and then say, yep, you know, press go on this API call. So we've just seen this in the OpenAI code. And if I scroll down a little bit more, without getting too deep into what's going on here specifically, uh, within the actual conversation itself, OpenAI or even 11 labs in this case, send events into the conversation that basically say, this is a user response, or this is a, an event that we're sending, that this is a tool call. So all we need to do is write some code that's gonna be able to identify when a, in this case, function call is being made. And um, when we listen to that function call, we can see if we have multiple, what's the name of that function call. So in our open AI code, we had uh, question and answer for basic FAQs and then book a tow. So if you're like um, a towing company, you might be booking a tow. So there's, there's two different functions you have here. That's the name of one, that's the name of the other. So in our little snippet, which was uh, here, we're basically able to identify, um, okay, if the response type, like if the event that we're getting from OpenAI is actually a function call, cool, that's step one. Okay, which function call is it? Is it question and answer? Uh, or is it, it was just here. Uh, book a toe. Now, when you, when you um, as that step two, when you figure out which one it was, so that you're basically just checking what function call it is, then over here, we're just calling that specific API call. So I'm not gonna go even deeper into this code to show you, but now you see at a high level, we uh, basically configured the API, uh, we configured the tool call. We then had a way to listen out for the events from the conversation to see which tool call it was. And then we are basically running that, um, that API call, that function as well. So uh, that's what these three steps are. So we're defining, we're identifying, and we're executing. So now if we go across to 11 labs, we have a slightly different approach. So uh, over in 11 labs, I'm just gonna actually use this screen, we had the tool calling section. So you're adding a tool and then you can do either the um, webhook or the client side tool. So just to show you, we have webhook or client side tool. So when we click on client side tool, so we can actually use this with our JavaScript, all we're doing here is the initial configuration of the name and description and whatever parameters we need to pull out from the conversation and actually feed it into the API call dynamically. So that's all happening in here. So that, that first bit of define the tool itself, it lives within the uh, 11 labs you know, interface or whatever you wanna call it. So it lives with 11 labs. Now, when you wanna identify when a tool is called and then execute on that API call, so like actually execute on that tool call, um, these two parts are within the replet code. So if I go across to replet and then I scroll down, uh, we actually have our primary function here. And I'm gonna go into this in a second, but this is this part here is essentially us um, defining the API call and that's what we're tapping into when we are gonna execute it. But the first bit I wanna look at is exactly how we pick up the event. So um, just like an open AI, we're actually creating a WebSocket, which is basically the connection between the call that's happening on Twilio, so like the human, and then the actual AI agent itself. So within that WebSocket connection between the AI and the human, um, these events are basically going into that WebSocket and we're able to like, imagine it's a bucket, you're, meant to, you're able to like pull out these events one by one and see what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. So we're able to um, use a logic like this to basically I identify um, that a tool call is being made and the tool call itself is an event that's coming from 11 labs. So uh, when we're seeing something like this, um, essentially like this is the brains of the operation. This is the actual 11 labs agent. So the, let's say the conversation happens in 11 labs and our code is just like the, uh, the messenger. So we have a conversation, We've got logs of the conversation. We've got different events coming into the conversation. So when the human speaks, it's logged. When the agent speaks, it's logged. Like all this stuff is happening into the conversation. 
And then at some stage here, the actual system prompt, the core system prompt says, whenever the user asks to speak to a human or gets escalated to an agent or whatever terminology you want to use, I'll just zoom in a little bit more. Um, you must use the transfer to agent function. So this is very simple. Like this is very common for all LLMs. You have to define in the actual prompt. When this happens, use this tool call. When that happens, use the other tool call. So then 11 labs is going to send this specific event, which is transfer to agent into our replet, uh, into our replet WebSocket. And we're able to pick up, oh, there's a transfer to agent uh, tool call that's being made. And that's exactly how we identify when the tool is being made. And then our code, will then tell us to um, basically fire off that specific um, function, which is that API call. So if I just go back to here, where is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go through in super, super depth here. Um, you can definitely take this code and you know get ChatGPT to break it down for you. But at a high level, what we're doing here, this is like another layer of complexity because for Twilio, um, we have to do something special in order to connect a live call with a human that's speaking to an AI to then to speak with another human. So um, at a high level, what's happening here, I'll just explain it to you visually. So we're here, we define the actual high level tool call here, but the replit code itself contains the, um, the way to, I, like, to listen to the events and to say, oh, it's a tool call for transfer to an agent. Um, and you can imagine here, if you had other client side tool calls, uh, you would basically have multiple different event listeners for different types of tool calling. Um, and then you would have different functions that basically trigger are triggered when that event is met. So we have transfer to an agent, and then this thing fires off the actual Twilio workflow. So from a Twilio point of view, the way that we're doing this is we're never hanging up the phone call with the customer. The phone call with the customer is active. It plugs into an AI, and then um, we create a conference room, which is a Twilio feature. We create a conference room. We push the customer into that conference room, we then dial out to the human support member and we're basically saying, hey, you got someone on the line. And then as soon as that human support member picks up the phone call, that human support member is popped into that conference room and the conference room is turned on. And then the AI is disconnected at the very end. So the high level workflow is you have the uh, customer calls up, he's speaking to the AI. The customer says, hey, dude, escalate me to a human. So the customer is placed inside this conference room. The uh, tool call then calls the human agent brings him into the conference room as well. And well, when the agent picks or when the human agent picks up the phone call, they're both now inside this conference room and the conference room is essentially like turned on and they can both speak to each other. And then the AI is disconnected from the conversation because we don't want to keep the AI in the conference room. It's going to get really messy with who's speaking to who and what's going on. So that's what's happening in that function. So if I go back to here, you can see at a high level, um, I've just removed my phone number, but basically the phone number that you want to um, escalate to would be inserted into here. And the cool thing is you can insert it dynamically. So this is like, this script is very MVP. Um, if you want to dynamically see like maybe during hours, your escalation phone number is different to your after hours escalation. So you might want to run a script that says, oh, are we Monday to Friday, nine to five? If we are, get number A. Or if, we, if we're not, get number B. And then insert it into this tool call function. So that's, uh, that's one upgrade that you can do. Um, but we're essentially, you can kind of like see through here, uh, we're moving the caller into a conference room. So when we escalate to the actual human agent, the person that's on the phone, the customer, gets a message that you can modify here, even dynamically if you wanted to, that says, please hold while we connect you to an agent. So that's what I hear after I say, uh, yep, I want to escalate to a human. The process starts and I hear, please hold while we uh, connect you to an agent. Then I hear this specific um, hold music, which is like the classical music we heard before. And in this time, the uh, human support member is also called. Now, here's another dynamic message that we see, which is when the, my phone was ringing, I could have actually listened to it and you guys didn't hear it, but you are being connected to, an, uh, to a caller who is speaking with, your AI, with our AI assistant. Uh, that's what took like, let's say five seconds. And once that was finished playing, then it connected me to the actual conference room and made it live. So here again, you can just insert into this function, this, this function here, like one more step that will just take the transcript of the conversation, uh, summarize it, uh, and you know put a custom message into here saying, "Hey, you're speaking with um, you know Bart who called up about getting a service for his car, and he wants to see if he can come in today, or you know whatever the you know, whatever the ask is." So now your human support member has the context, goes in, and hits the ground running. 
So um, yeah, that's what you could do here. This is how you can like, actually beef up the process by having dynamic messages played to different people. Maybe you wanna change the hold music. Um, maybe you wanna figure out how to get a dynamic use of like um, uh, escalation numbers. But uh, yeah, this is the entire uh, script. It's super easy to use. And um, yeah, at a high level, like uh, the best way for you to actually learn how to do this tool calling is take that script that I gave you. Um, you know that it works, you see how it works. You know that you have to actually go into here and choose client side tools. Um, and that's how you actually configure your tool. And just to show you this as well, in case you guys are interested, um, I've got a very basic configuration here. It just has the tool name, which I'm referencing in my uh, actual system prompt, and then a very basic description, which is this function transfers the caller to a human support member. So this is how you would do it uh, very easy on this end. The primary, like the, the crux of the tool call can be held within the replit code within your JavaScript, which is what's happening here. Um, but you can just take this code, put it into ChatGPT or the new Claude uh, model that came out. It's actually pretty good. Um, put it into there and say, hey, I wanna now do a tool call for um, plugging into a Pinecone, uh, uh, Pinecone agent so I can do um, you know, question and answers that way because maybe the 11 labs uh, knowledge base is good but it kind of gives you incorrect answers. So a lot of people like using Pinecone as well. Um, and the cool thing is when you're making the Pinecone API call, you can choose streaming for the API call, which is gonna let you, I'm pretty sure, like basically hook up with this and have a live response. So you don't actually have to wait three, four, eight, whatever, like two seconds for the actual response to come back from the agent or one second. Um, you'll be able to just like instantly be playing it back live. So uh, actually with 11 Labs, I'm not too sure if that's supported as well. Um, but that will, be, that will be a very fast kind of interaction you can have like super, super smooth and super fast because 11 Labs is very fast. Um, anyway, guys, uh, like I mentioned at the start of this video, I've had, um, well, I pretty much wrote the JavaScript implementation. I was like the first person to write it. I shared it with the uh, 11 Labs devs and they've used that as a base basis for their GitHub repo for their um, JavaScript as well. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, very proud of that and very happy about that. But if you are a business owner and you want me to build this out for you, then my description, like my email is gonna be in the description of this video reach out to me, I can build out this uh, AI caller for you. I can also introduce a more robust um, escalations handling. So like transferring to a human support. Um, but otherwise, I'll have this script available on my uh, Gumroad. So you can go ahead and download that. And um, you can actually just plug and play and straight away have uh, escalation to a human uh, support agent today within the next five, 10 minutes. All right, guys, thank you very much and enjoy.